Hello again, everyone. This is Gilmer, and this is episode 53 of my Let's Play War in the East. I am playing as the Soviets. It is March 26, 1942, and I looked at the manual, and I, I learned a couple of things that are pretty interesting. I am not positive how to use some of this information, but... I am going to use it as, as best I can. One of the few things that I learned is that command capacity, a core type HQ has eight command points. An army type HQ has 24 command points. An army group, 96 command points. A front, 72 command points. And I, th I assume this is for Germans and Soviets. It does not say otherwise. And then up here it tells me how much command points a brigade is, a fortified region, a division, a corps, etc. And honestly, that is very interesting, but I don't know... how to use that information because I'm looking at this wait a minute let's pull this up this is an airborne core okay this is a core HQ that makes sense this may, okay I, I've I figured out a little bit of it just by looking at it right now this is a command a core HQ command so it has eight points and it has a lot of units attached to it to be honest and it really shouldn't it, that's uh, one of the things that I've messed up is that I've allowed divisions to be attached to core HQs and they really I mean, yeah, you can do it, and you're, and actually, you're supposed to do it, but you're not supposed to do too many. And I have attached plenty of units to these airborne HQs just because I would not, not through any, you know, specific thinking. I would just do auto assign, and it, it would attach it to the airborne core and. HQ and that's obviously not a very good thing one other very interesting thing that I learned is that these units that are one hex back from the lines can be set let's see if this you know let's see if this works If I set these to reserve, then they could uh, potentially support this unit, or this stack of units, or this stack of units, or this stack of units, depending on who attacks them. Same with this one. Whoops. Let's put it on reserve. And likewise, plenty of others, I can do the same thing. Like this one is going to, I'm actually going to move that there and I'm going to put these guys on reserve. And I'm just going to do that for really as many as I can, I guess. And it, they say that the, So I can't do it for them. I and what they said in the manual is that these units that are in reserve can actually participate more than one battle in a turn. If if uh, you know, say this stack gets attacked, he could support this stack. And then in the same turn, if this stack gets attacked, he can support this stack. 
and then if anybody moved up and attacked that stack he could uh, support that stack as well so that's a uh, very interesting um, information to be honest well, let's let us attach him we'll attach him to the 46th army since it's right there and then let's put him on reserve as well and are there any other units I can kind of these these one attack units these these ones that have just one for attack uh, not too sure that I really care to put them on reserve I don't know that they'll do any good because they really aren't very strong but these others especially support type units in the sense of these artillery brigades and uh, engineer type brigades if they help I think that's gonna be really good that'll, that'll really help the battle and so that gives me something to that gives me something to, to actually use these units for and I guess I will use some of these one power units as reserve just in case because it can't hurt it really can't hurt for them to be set as reserve I mean you know, what else are they going to do let's move these two units up and we will put them on reserve as well and uh, so that's the western front so they have 72 command point units and I don't necessarily know that that's good uh, that's a, a good situation and I don't know where oh there we go so it's a stack so these two units are attached to the Western Front and I want them to actually be attached to the 29th Army so let's change them to the 29th Army see something. Wait a minute. Units. I wonder if I wonder if that's their command points. That current command points. Because if that is, the Western Front is way over. And uh, the Southwest Front is way over. And the Northwest Front is way over. That's over. Oh. That's not what I wanted to do. Where is the West Front? I don't know if I can. I want some strong units. If I move anybody up, Okay. That's a very good, strong. Well, I mean, relatively. I can't do reserve on that one. Or on that one. Or on that one. Okay. Well, 
That's not good. Looks like they go back to ready status. Ah, the hell with that. Too many units that are in have to be in refit mode. Fifty-fifth army. Fifty-fifth has got a lot of units. We put it with a forty-eight. If you have to have a certain amount of movement points to put them on reserve. Division, division, division. Uh, and there you go. We'll see if it works. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to use these. Uh, these these units that are at one strength because I don't think I can use them. I mean, I don't think I have enough to really do anything with anybody else. It makes me want to move these units up a lot faster because now that I know I can use them for something, it's, uh, it's almost like I, I'm 
Well, I have to get them up here now. something I'll have to keep a really close view on to see if uh, I don't know that I want them set to reserve if they're in the I don't know if I want to have them set to reserve if they're in the actual front lines because that could get real dicey to do anything. Sorry, I was yawning. What did that say? What did that say? Because I saw reserve. so fast I couldn't see if it said it was one of my reserves or one of their reserves uh oh here we go so what was that here no that's get this thing off my screen now. Oh, here we go. Exit. I read some interesting things. Uh, well, it wasn't that interesting to be honest because it didn't really tell me too much. 
But I did try to read up on the air airfields. Didn't get much in the way of it, real information for him though. See, they're kind of backed off right here. Yeah, it's almost a certainty that This is the 6th Army. come in pretty handy if this works wow I've been recording for 23 minutes already it really doesn't seem like it interesting to see how this plays out because if I'd have been doing that if that works which is you know going by the instruction book that works and I've seen the Germans do it and I always just thought it was uh, when I saw reserve units being added on I always thought it was just the uh, support units from the HQ and I didn't realize that there were actually reserve units you know behind set to reserve and uh, if I could have been doing that the whole time I am really putting my 
myself a disservice. Looking good. Looking strong. This this over here is just a big mush of units. I don't want to just assume that it'll go more than one hex. If we could get it to go to more than one hex, that would be awesome. But I doubt that that would be the case. See, there. A 34 bomber. So the 34th Army and that staff, Stavka. I guess I need to be a little bit more proactive about who I'm assigning units to because just doing it by default, that ain't working very well because I have them assigned all over the place and they're not doing set to reserve and that'll support those two stacks at least hopefully um, and he'll support those two stacks what else can we do right there General Major, that is not ideal. General Major is the lowest general that you can have. And it is not ideal to have him in charge of an army. And they said that in the, the manual. So I'm going to make um, a GM as a General Major. A GL is a general lieutenant or lieutenant, lieutenant general. And General Vasily Chuikov. Oh, he's badass. He's one of my thumbnails. I don't know if he's really a badass, but he's supposed to be pretty good. He has an infantry of six, so. And where is that? 60th. There it is. Where's 
to 27. See, I, I need to. I need to really do a better job about this. Second, overwhelmed. I mean, where is the twenty-second? Oh, it's not going to be on this list because they're already attached to the twenty-second, probably. But I just want to make sure that we're in good shape. I have no idea where some of these H. Oh, there's a, there's that one. All right, I'm at 31 minutes right now, but I really want to see some of this in action. I wish I I, I probably show preference screen animation speed. Combat resolution message. Let's make that a two. No, wait a minute. Message delay. That's it. Let's make that a two. So that we can look at it a little bit longer. This is an interesting. This tells you the amount of supplies. And I think it's. It tells you by these little tick marks over to the left. Because if you want, look at those little tick marks. Oh, it didn't change. So, fuel. Okay. Morale. So, yeah, so those little tick marks are changing when I click soft. Experience. And then when you get supplies, it goes up to four and then when you go to fuel many of them have are up to four so it looks like a lot of these are what's this current units attached so these units Supplies, 59%, fuel, 123%, ammo, 64%, vehicles, 100%, morale's at 72, um, it doesn't look too bad, I mean, the supply could be better. So I'm going to end this turn. I want to process this turn and just kind of look and see what happens with uh, the messages and also with my reserve units. How often they are actually put into service. I'm hoping we'll see a lot of that and it'll help out the battles a lot more because every time it seemed like the Germans... Oh, and look at that, it's mud, or, yeah, it looks like mud this time. I wish it was a little further out. Oh, they're doing a lot of reconnaissance.
they're probably not going to attack a lot because it's being a, a mud turn. I was really hoping to see a lot more reserves being pr placed into action. It was a short term because it was a mud turn. And I am supposed to get units that I can control that will re repair rail. I just haven't seen any. I just have not seen any. April so now April means I can combine tank brigades into um, I might have to check on that April I can do something I think it's check tank brigades into tank core and if that is the case then we will definitely want to be doing that Let's try 33, 33, 32nd. So we'll clear off 33. Yeah, tank core. And the tank core TOE is different. It's supposed to be different than three big brigades, you know, just added together. It's supposed to be a different, and maybe it, you know, oh, it's supposed to have. A infantry regiments or something added to it so it's a stronger in essence it's stronger than three brigades added together even though when you combine them it's just those three brigades but eventually it will get some you know replacements and things like that that will build up its uh, table of equipment so anyway hope you're still with me because 42 is going to be interesting but 43 is going to be really interesting because in June of 42 I will be able to build rifle corps and then in September of 42 I'll be able to build up motorized and mechanized core to use and then in 43 is when I'm going to, I should start be, being able to really do some good breakouts, hopefully. One other thing I wanted to try if. Even if I don't take it, but if I bomb it, and if I use, no, no, bomb unit, it doesn't look like there's an interdict or a bomb crossroad or whatever it would be. So maybe I can't do that, but I'm going to start using my airfields a little bit more freely because think that's going to be what helps get me some of my breakthroughs. And, uh, you know, that's what I need. I, I'm going to need something to help me. Break through some of their lines. Because as it is, I'm not doing that great in breaking through their lines, but, you know, it, I've kind of been handicapped a little bit with the being, being able to form core and stuff. But, uh, 
I do expect it to be uh, 40, you know, late 42 and early 43 to be a very interesting time. Wow. That was like a four last time. that if they want to come down into this little gauntlet with any of their units I'll be happy to let them do that I've thought of another thing and I know this is this is going to be a, a, a lot longer than normal and I thought of something else I was thinking about that what I said about Ivan Konev and his he lets the the middle attack and you know he retreats in the middle and then the, the, the flanks collapse down on the uh, you know the pursuing Germans and I'm wondering if that'll actually work you know if I had something where I had like a a corridor of maybe three hexes deep and three hexes across and then have really strong units flying in the sides and started retreating in front of them if they would follow me and allow me to do a you know kind of a bulge kind of a pocket deal that would be pretty cool if I could get a, if I could pull that off I don't know if that would work though um, essentially the Germans have become a at this point the German army has become a defensive army they're not doing that much attacking to actually drive through my forces and go and take stuff it's more they're attacking me just to spoil my attacks and they're not really looking to gain any more land than they have as it is a third I mentioned two things I learned while reading the manual a third thing that I learned reading the manual is if I capture I think it's Bucharest Romania com Romania will just will will surrender almost automatically and there's a mechanism for all of the the nations allied with Germany to surrender based on the amount of cities that you have in your control that are linked to your supply so that's really really interesting if I could get to Bucharest and have Romania leave the uh, fighting that would be very very interesting another a fourth thing I learned was that well, the fourth thing that I learned was What I just did there was I took that HQ that was sitting there and I relocated it and it it allows you to do that instead of having your units uh, your HQ unit surrender I don't think I can do that with an actual ground unit so that way you s at least you save your general Although I don't know why that's an air command. That's part of the issue right there. But a fifth thing that I learned is that if they control Leningrad, the uh, Finnish forces can attack down into Russia past the what, this Finnish no attack line. They can attack below that if. Uh, Germany controls Leningrad, which it does. So, I guess I could, if I could take Helsinki, I could knock Finland out of the war. And, along with that information, I learned 
that if I control most of Poland, I will get Polish units. They won't say, they won't be Polish national units, but their description will say Polish and they'll be Russian units. And, and if Romania surrenders, that the same thing will happen. I'll have Ro Romanian troops or units. They'll still be Soviet unit units, but they'll be named Romanian you know, first infantry or some division or something like that. So that is another interesting thing when I read the uh, manual. And I'm hoping all of this is still valid because, you know, a lot of stuff has changed. But the stuff that I read, I think, is pretty close to what it was originally. But that's a lot of ground to gain. I'm, I'm looking at it. If you look at it, when we started this, this was this is the line, I think, that they were they were across. Because I know we, we have Lithuania and Latvia. They and we have Vilnius that was their you know their attack start was about twelve hexes to the west of Vilnius. And so that's where they were. And I gotta I gotta take all that back. That's gonna be a lot. And the sixth thing that I <laughs> I read in the manual is I should be trying to drop supply on this partisan unit and so let's see transcrap transport aircraft not available they said what you need to do is get the unit the air units that can do transport and get them as close as to the front line as you can because it yeah, that's what you need and I, I obviously probably do not these are all these I think can run these IL-4s can run transport missions so if I move <coughs> excuse me if I move that guy I don't think you can Oh, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, it's still not available. Okay. Anyway, 47 minutes long, 48 minutes now. I am going to call this episode to a close. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't uh, record on Thursday or last night. Thursday I didn't record because I came home and I saw that thing going on with over in France. And I just, I was glued to the TV set all night. But, and then yesterday I was just, I got all, you know, deep into another game that I'm playing. And, uh, you know, I had planned, I had thought about doing a video at about 9 o'clock last night. And then it was 1 o'clock before I even knew it. So, that's why I didn't record last night. So anyway, I am uh, going to see you next time. Thank you very much.